Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a makeup look, the one I'm going to be doing for Slam Dunk Festival that I'm going to next week. Now, I don't think this video is going to be great. Um, this is the look that I've gone for. Again, my camera is crap at picking up the look so I don't know if this video is ever going to go out. If it does, I can only apologise for the quality but I'm mainly just talking you through a makeup look that I'm going to be doing for the festival. Now there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. One is because obviously the festival is an all day thing and um, I want to show you products that I use that keep makeup on my skin all day, things that you know don't slip and slide off my face, what products I use, tips and tricks that I've basically got um, in order to keep your makeup to an event that you're going to all day. I'm in no way good at makeup. This is very much a fool's, dummies, beginner's guide to making makeup stay on all day. I'm in no way a professional, but I think sometimes that's almost quite good to see how a another normal person who really can't do makeup does their makeup. What I did basically to create this, I'm gonna say like to create this look like I'm some kind of YouTuber who can do her makeup when I'm anything but, um, but how I basically created this look, which looks like any other normal look, it looks no different at all, does it really? Um, but basically I've just got more makeup on than I normally would, I've got some false eyelashes on, but it's mainly just a tutorial on the best way or the best kind of makeup to have if you want something that isn't going to shift all day, you want something that's going to last, kind of have a bit of staying power. That's kind of the principle of how I've decided to do this video. And then the next thing is kind of what is Slam Dunk Festival. Basically it's a day festival that happens in, well, I'm going to the Leeds one because um, I'm Northerner, but they also do Birmingham and London. I have been going to Slam Dunk now for, well, since 2008, so for nine years I've been going. I have done all three festivals. I've done a couple of years where I did all three, a couple of years where I've just done two of them. But this year I am just going to Leeds, back to my hometown and very, very excited to go, absolutely love it. Like I say, I've been going since I was 16 and I'm now 25, so it's kind of like my adult life is going to slam dunk every year. Really, really looking forward to it. It's kind of more, more of an alternative festival, so this festival look that I've kind of done definitely is in no way, you know, gems on your face, putting your hair in French plaits, that's not the style of slam dunk. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's girls there that will do that, but it's definitely not a festival in the sense of, you know, going like that with your look. There's just mainly a lot of girls with heavy eyeliner and tattoos still, which is what we've all done for years. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. And like I say, I think the quality is going to be rubbish, um, but I can only apologise if this video even goes up. If it does, I'm sure it'll get very few views, but at least I've done something, I've given it a go um, and hope you guys like it. If you've got any help or advice or if you've got any questions, let me know below and I'll be happy to answer them. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, this lighting is so annoying. So I am filming this in my dressing room area and the only light I have in here, I have filmed in here before and I think I apologised about the lighting then. And the only light I have is like a skylight just above me and when the sun is out it's really really bright so it almost appears I don't know what it's going to look like when I'm actually editing this but it kind of made all my face pretty much white so I've put kind of like a sheet over it but there's still a little bit of light coming through so when the when the weather changes I think it's a pretty cloudy day today my skin keeps changing and I know this is a makeup video so I'm not a professional YouTuber, I don't have all the right equipment, I definitely don't have light boxes or anything, so we're going to give it a go and hopefully it won't be too terrible. So as you can see I'm wearing absolutely no makeup and I look slightly horrendous. Um, I have prepped my skin before this, so when I prep my skin before I wear makeup I use the Origins Ginseng Moisturiser. I actually featured this in my What I Got For Christmas, so I'll link that below where I kind of spoke about this a bit more in detail. I couldn't really afford this on a day-to-day -day basis, let's just say, so I kind of use this for when my skin is in dire need of real moisture kind of put back into it, or if I know that I'm going to be wearing quite a lot of makeup and my skin is probably going to hate me afterwards, I try to give it as much moisture kind of pre-makeup as I possibly can. So I use this for my face. And then I suffer from very, very dry eyes. My eyelids especially get very dry this time of year. So I weirdly don't have an actual eye cream that I found and loved 
and it's worked wonders for me yet so if you have any recommendations of really moisturizing eye creams let me know in the comments below because that would be amazing um, but today I've used the Clinique all about the eyes now to be honest with you this is just a sample size that I think I got in a Clinique bonus time um, but this is just one that reduces circles. This is all I could find in my skincare box today. So this is going to kind of have to do. So because I have ridiculously long hair nowadays, I'm going to just put it up with this headband, even though my forehead is absolutely massive. I've prepped my skin with the moisturisers. And then because I... I give myself a lot of time for my base to kind of sink into my face before I kind of really go in with all the makeup. So I gave myself about 15-20 minutes with the moisturiser and then purely to save time filming this video I've already applied my primers and I have already used the primers on my face. I've decided to use a MAC Prep and Prime. This makes my makeup stay on all day. I've put this all over my face. I've fallen back in love with Benefits Professional. I think everyone and their mother owns this. And I adore this stuff. I've used it for at least four or five years now. But it has a slight kind of skin tone tint to it. And I find that obviously it is there to kind of reduce the look of pores. And it does do that. It does that amazingly. But I have, you probably can't even see, I have very, very dark lines. They're actually veins. Um, underneath my eye and just going up my face here and this is something that really really annoys me although foundation does cover it to have it kind of covered slightly just through a primer is absolutely amazing so then it really really helps when I then go on to put more uh, more products on my face so as well as my moisturizer and my primer I also use this Elizabeth Arden 8 hour lip balm I put this on before I do any of the rest of my makeup it gives it time to kind of set into my lips it literally is amazing like I have this much left of this one so I just put that on my lips it's literally clear it does nothing it gets it for moisturize it but it just helps when I eventually get around to doing my lipstick it'll already have sunk in so it keeps them really moisturized for ready for when I put on my lipstick so the first makeup product I'm gonna start off with is my concealers now some people put concealer on before foundation some people put it on after depending on how well my skin and my foundation goes depends whether or not I put any on afterwards now I use the one that everybody uses which is the collection lasting perfection which is looking very very grubby and then the second concealer which I use, which is quite a dark concealer. So I don't wear this all the time, only if my foundation is slightly darker and the foundation I've chose to wear for Slam Dunk is slightly darker. So I've decided to go for the Bourjois Healthy Mix. This is a really, really nice concealer, but when I got it, I didn't realise it was going to be as dark as it is on my face. I have since learnt the best way to kind of colour match for my skin and different times of year. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix these two together. So as you can see, although I find it really, really difficult to put the collection on my hand, I have the two on my hand there. So as you can see, the Bourjois one is a lot darker than the collection Last Imperfection one. Um, but all I do is I take... Oh, this looks really, really grubby. It's not meant to. Um, I've actually got um, an e.l.f. concealer brush. I've had this for probably longer than I should have had, but it get, I wash my brushes quite regularly, so that's not really an issue for me. A lot of people put concealer on with their fingers, it's just something that I've always used is a concealer brush and I put mine basically in the edges of my nose where I often find that my foundation will crack and I often put it, I put it down my nose, I put a little bit on my forehead, a little bit on my chin and then as you, as everybody does with their concealer I always put the X's on my eyes and then I kind of I half brush them in and then I do have a beauty blender which I've kind of started using a bit more but obviously before I had the beauty blender I had no other option but to kind of use a mixture of both my fingers and the brush the brush is nice but obviously I feel you can always see brush strokes on your uh, on your skin and I hate the way that brush strokes look on your skin so I do find the beauty blender does work quite nicely as literally blending it in 
So once I put that on, I take my beauty blender, which I'm not going to lie, is looking quite grubby, but I'm actually saving my next one I've got for Slam Dunk, which is quite stupid, I know, but um, I used this one the other day when I practiced this makeup look, so, and I, I kind of maybe only half washed it since. <laughs> um, so I've got the Real Techniques Beauty Blender, and I'm just going to go in with the actual tip of it. Sometimes I wet this just before I blend it, but I actually feel like the brush and my skin in general <coughs> has actually taken to it quite well today. God, I hope it does this next week. And it's kind of blended into my skin really nicely. And again, it annoys me because you're not going to be able to see this properly on the camera. Okay, so that is my concealer for now done. I will see when I put my foundation on if I feel I need any more. My foundation that I'm going to use is a new purchase and it is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. And I've heard amazing things about this foundation. Now when the woman matched me up with the little um, matcha skin thing they have nowadays, um, she actually matched me up with um, 2N1 Desert Beige, which, uh, yeah, I think you can see it quite well on the camera. It's pretty dark in comparison to probably how my skin is looking. And I know that's what a lot of girls do, is they go for darker shades to make their skin look healthier. And I've never done that, like not properly. When I've had a darker shade by accident, I've always felt like, oh my goodness, that's going to look horrendous, like, I look horrible, and I've never liked it. However, I did actually, obviously, use this. Um, she put it on my face, and I quite liked it, actually, I'm not going to lie, like, I didn't think it looked too terrible, and I have a lot of trust in people at beauty counters, and I probably shouldn't do all the time, but I had trust in her, and I thought, you know what, let's give it a go. So I now have, this is going to look horrendous because it's also got the concealer on my hand. But as you can see, it looked really, really dark. Um, and it is, it is, but it isn't. Like, you'll see when it's on, hopefully. Um, and I'm going to use the Real Techniques foundation brush to kind of put my first layer of this onto my face. I haven't used a foundation brush in years. I've literally used the Real Techniques face brush and a beauty blender now for the last couple of years. And... She put the um, she put the foundation on my skin with a foundation brush at the counter in Debenhams and I didn't hate it, if I'm honest. I kind of liked the way it went on with one. So I thought, well, I've got one at home, let's give it a go. So I thought what I'd do is I'll always put my first layer on, especially with this foundation, just for a foundation brush, just to kind of get it all over my face. Although not properly blended in, because again, all I can see is the brush strokes and it really, really infuriates me. But I'm just thinking it might just get it all over my face. Plus I can get it on all the little nooks and crannies because these brushes are really, really good for doing that. One reason I kind of also like doing this is because I don't really like the idea of going in straight with foundation and a beauty blender. I've been seeing a lot of them videos that have been making their rounds on YouTube with people opening up their beauty blenders and from where it's kind of soaked the foundation in and some of them are so scary, it's unbelievable. Like, And it scares me the thought of me putting foundation in and it just soaking it up straight away. Especially when, you know, it's £31 foundation. I definitely don't have the means for my beauty blender to be soaking up. It's bad enough that it goes into the foundation brush. So that's kind of my first attempt at putting the foundation on. I've then got like this little weird mound on my skin. Again, the colour picks up a lot worse on the camera than it does look on my hand. And then I kind of wash it up with the foundation, uh, with the beauty blender. And then that's when I then go into patting my skin. Now I will probably edit a lot of this bit out because this is where I really, really, really take my time. So that is my foundation buffed in. Again, still looks crap on the camera. And then the next thing I always do is I actually go in with my powder. Now this is very much on its last legs and this is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder, the Long Lasting Pressed Powder. And this is really, really cheap. This is the shade Transparent, number one. It's super cheap. I've been using this since I've been using makeup, really, or variants of it. And I do have another one, I think, I hope, in my drawers over there. But this is very much on its last legs. But I'm just going to use this all over my face. The only downside to not having much left is I do feel like you can probably see it all wafting around in the uh, 
in the sun from how I've done it and I find that I can literally just cover my face in this and I can't tell except for the fact that it holds my makeup in place all day so I do kind of go all out with my powder I don't find that it ever makes my skin look too cakey or anything like some people do it kind of softens the look a little bit for me which I kind of want. I like the idea of wearing makeup but not necessarily looking like I'm covered in makeup but at the same time wanting my skin to look really good. So I kind of try to find a happy medium because my skin doesn't look great. I can still very much see. So for example, obviously I've got quite a lot on but a lot of YouTubers don't show you this. I find that the lighting they use, their skin manages to look flawless but every now and then when they kind of do one of their little looks at the end you can kind of see like their skin showing through so it makes you think oh actually it's okay that my skin looks like that as well so I figured that I'm just going to show you how I actually look because that's kind of what's more important so even though I've put like quite a bit of foundation on you can still very much see the little lumps and bumps under my skin but I like that I think it's nice to actually still show what your skin I think there's nothing worse than just looking more like plastic than anything else so once i've done my powder i actually start on my eyes i let everything on my base kind of just set in and then i go in and put my kind of define my face a bit more afterwards so i kind of know how much definition to do depending on how much of the rest of my makeup i've done as silly as that sounds but for slam dunk i actually want to wear false eyelashes so because of that I aren't, I'm not actually doing too much with my eyes. I have very small eyes. It's very obvious. You can tell that. And I've decided that I don't want to do too much. I don't want to look over the top. I do feel like false eyelashes will almost be kind of statement enough for my eyes. So I don't need too much going on. And all I do is I'm literally just going to put a colour on. I'm not going to do much with it. Um, I might do a little bit of blending with a colour very similar. But not too much. So I'm going to go in with the um, Real Technique Shading Brush and I'm just going to put this all over my eyelid. I'm really, really not doing much with my eyes at all. Um, and I've got the Naked 2 palette, which is my favourite of the, uh, the Urban Decay palettes. And for this, you can't really tell on here at all. Um, but I'm going to use the shade... Now, I've not actually decided this for the day yet, I'd just like to point out. But it's going to be somewhere between Chopper, um, YDK... Or maybe Suspect. I've never used Suspect before by the looks of that. Chopper and YDK I use all the time. So I want to kind of just stick with them. I like rose gold. I have really, really nice eyeshadows. Um, but I always seem to stick with these two. I feel like because it's a whole day event, I should probably just stick to what I know rather than playing with some other eyeshadows, not quite knowing how they're going to sit on my eyes, um, if they're going to slide off. So... I feel like I should probably stick to what I know works best for me. I'm just going to go in with Chopper. It's a very, very light rose gold shade. So I feel like, if anything, this is going to just give it a little something, but not too much. Because I really, really don't want much at all on my eyelids. But at the same time, having completely nothing on there would feel a little bit strange. I normally have just something, even if it is just minimal. I always like just to have just a little bit of colour on there. So I've just put Chopper all over my eyes. And it's just a very, very bland rose gold shade. But that's that's all I want. I might put a little tiny bit of YDK just in the corners. Now, I'm actually going to use this same brush again. Um, it's a slightly darker shade. But I'm just going to use it just in the... Just kind of in my crease. And just put it a little bit in there. Not do too much with it with this brush. But it does kind of fit into the crease quite nicely. And then I have I have this very cheap Top Shop um I'm guessing eyeshadow brush. It has nothing on it except for the word Top Shop. And I got it in the sale probably ages ago now. And for like a pound. And I just thought, well, it's another thing to add to the collection. And sometimes it's always nice. To just have something you can find a use for, especially when like you don't want to necessarily use your best brushes um, and this is something that actually I found is amazing for blending especially around in my crease and then I'm then going to go in with my eyeliner I am 
the queen of winged eyeliner in the sense that that's all I ever wear. I'm not necessarily great at it. In fact, I'm not great at it. The eyeliner I've always used is the Collection 2000. I've used that since I started using makeup when I was about 13, 14, and it's been my godsend holy grail eyeliner. However, I recently bought myself the sample set of quite a few Kat Von D products and in there was this sample size of the Kat Von D tattoo liner which I'd heard amazing things about but have never bought myself the full one purely because A I didn't really want to spend that much especially if it was an eyeliner that I didn't like so I'm just going to go in with the eyeliner now I've actually got a mirror here because I need a mirror also just to point out before anybody starts questioning I have an issue when it comes to eyes. I struggle very, very greatly at having anything near my eye when my eye is open. It's not, I don't want to say a fear, but it probably is. Like I can't, I struggle when I go to opticians. I don't like anything near my eyes. So when I do apply um, eyeliner, I have to shut my eyes because I hate the idea of the nib coming towards my eye and me being able to see it. It really freaks me out. So yes, I am not the norm with how I apply my eyeliner. I'm also going to do it in the mirror here, so I don't know if you'll see it greatly. But it's something that I don't feel like I'm bad at in any way, shape or form. I'm also always a lot better at doing this eye than this eye. Don't know how, don't know why, I just am. Okay, I've actually just put my camera up a little bit higher in hope that the lighting might be a little bit better. I don't think it is. That doesn't surprise me. But I've just put the eyeliner wings on my eyes. And now I'm going to go in with my eyebrows. So to start with, I have this old number seven um, eyebrow and eyelash, I guess, groomer. Um, it's just got a little brush on there. And I've always used this literally just to get the bits of foundation out of my eyebrows before I go and do them. At the moment, my eyebrows very, very much need doing. They aren't in the greatest of condition, but I'm not doing them yet purely because I've got a week to slam dunk and I'd rather kind of do them in one big hit towards the end of next week. Now for my eyebrows, I don't have the Anastasia Beverly Hills that everyone else has. I do however have this Benefit Browsing, which I use quite a few products by the way um, for my eyebrows and I don't do it the right way. Don't do it like the normal way all the other girls do, but I kind of just go with it for my eyebrows. Um, but all I use is, I use this very, I think it's meant to be like an eyeliner brush, um, and it's just a cheap Barry M one. I've had it ages. And all I do is I kind of find the points of the end of my eyebrows, and then I kind of just do a couple of lines, just to kind of give myself a little bit of definition, and then just kind of go up into my eyebrows. Now, there are a lot, a lot of different ways of doing your eyebrows. I've watched some girls who can kind of go backwards through doing them, which I really admire. Like, I, I've tried it and I just, I just couldn't get on board with that. Okay, so that's just a little bit of definition on like the main bit up to the, the arch on my eyebrow. And this is just done with the wax part of it. So again, not necessarily how exactly you're meant to do it, but I find that using the wax as my base helps the powder stay on. I mean, I know people do it the other way around, so the wax is over the top. So once I've kind of got some form of definition-ish, <coughs> I then go in with this really teeny tiny brush that I've had. I've got two of these now because I absolutely love them. These are the small precision brushes from um, e.l.f., which I really struggle to say that word. Um, and they are literally just a very, very small tipped brush. There's no kind of direction of how you meant to use them but I found that if I just apply a little bit of the brown uh, the brown powder in this then it just kind of gives a little bit of colour over the top this isn't how I actually apply my main colour but I, I've always used this as just kind of a extra little something just over the top to mix in with the wax and it's always just kind of filled them in a little bit but again I don't I'm not too serious with my eyebrows, like as long as there's something that resembles eyebrows that aren't too um, blonde, weird looking things. Because annoyingly, my mum is blonde and my dad has dark hair, and obviously I took my dad's hair, but for some weird reason, I took my mum's eyebrows, and they are extremely light, naturally. So I have to kind of give them a little something. So that is just the kind of 
standard shape I tend to go for. Like I say, I really, really don't go for anything like proper. I'm not bothered about how they look at all, really. And then lastly, to finish my eyebrows, I have fallen madly in love with the Benefit Gimme Brow. And annoyingly, this is the full size gimme brow that I got for Christmas and it is tiny, it's ridiculous how small this is but the other one was as well like before they rebranded everything and um, this is in shade number one and it is brow volumizing fiber gel and I absolutely adore it like I love this stuff but good god it's tiny for what you get like and it doesn't last that long at all and it really really makes me sad that it's like 16 pounds and it just lasts two minutes but at the same time, I absolutely adore it. And I use this to go over my eyebrows. It helps unclog any wax and any powder that's already in there. But it also, at the same time, is obviously designed to kind of colour in your eyebrows, I guess. It's actually designed... You can use this on your on its own. I have used this on its own many times. So that's kind of the general eyebrow shape I'm going for today. Again, they look quite terrible because literally I have so much eyebrow hair under here right now but it's blonde so you can't really see it but I know it's there and therefore it looks ridiculous close up so that's kind of the general eye look except for the false eyelashes but I'm going to do them more towards the end because I find that I'm faffy with eyelashes so I'm going to go in with my blusher now I don't actually want to do too much of a blusher as part of this look I tried it with the blusher that I use on like a day-to-day -day basis which is the sleek one in rose gold which is the most, oh, it's the most gorgeous shade I think I've ever seen and I absolutely adore it. It's this shade here and it's just got loads and loads of little rose gold pigments in it and I adore this but as part of this kind of look it doesn't really go that well. So I decided to go for the sleek eyeshadow in um, the shade uh, Flushed and it's kind of a dark pink colour. I find that this kind of you don't need very very much but it sits very nicely within the the darker foundation colour but again that's literally all I'm using like I get why is it the blusher looks worse on my skin and is the only thing that's showing up that makes it look terrible but it really isn't I've actually hardly got anything on there but that's the bit that it's decided to pick up oh great so now it makes it like I can't even put bloody blusher on my face and it's gone all down here <laughs> but seriously that is very very minimal on my face but for some weird reason my camera has just decided to pick up the redness of it. And then to contour my face, or to give it a bit of definition, I don't think I contour my face in any way, shape or form. I use the Hoola Benefit Bronzer, and mine is still the sample pack that I use. So what I do is I get it on the Real Techniques uh, Sculpting Brush. So I literally just do what everyone else does and just kind of... I do very much blend this out. It looks horrendous right now. Don't judge me just yet, I do blend this out massively when I use it and then once I've kind of got the lumps and bumps looking horrendous look like look how dirty it makes me look <laughs> and then I kind of blend it underneath my jawline again the camera makes it look like I've put loads on and it looks crap but it really really doesn't look like that the bit that I want to show you the camera doesn't pick up and then the bits that I that are kind of minimal it makes it look really, really bad. Like, that looks horrific. That just looks like blusher and bronzer, and it's really, really not. I'm hoping that when I come to editing this, it's not going to look as bad as it seems to look in the viewfinder. For my highlighter, now I've used every highlighter under the sun. I'm a big fan of the High Beam by Benefit, which I might actually use that, actually, on Slam Dunk. I'm, I'm contemplating using that one, thinking about it now, because I really do love that. But for the last year or so, I've actually been using the Lord & Berry um, Luminizer in the shade Moon. And I adore this. Oh, look how much I've got left. That's so sad. Um, and this is just a stunning highlighter. And I put it in the exact same places that I've always put my, um, my high beam. So just on top of my cheekbones. And I always put it just around my eyes. <coughs> a little bit down my nose. A little bit on the bridge of my god this again look how much it's picking this up on the camera and then I always put a little bit on the top of my forehead not too sure why I just always have done and for my highlighter I've always blended in with my finger purely because I find that if I blend in with a brush or whatever it almost blends it in too much 
Like I actually almost want the highlighter to kind of sit on my skin with just a slight bit of blending than anything else. God, that sun again. I can't bloody win. And then I'm just going to take this double-ended Primark brush, really nothing special at all. I can't remember what I actually bought this for. It must have been for a reason. And then I take a teeny tiny bit of Hoola bronzer and I just put it down the bridge of my nose just down from where I did my highlight and then again I just blend that in slightly I mean again I I don't have an issue with my nose like, I quite like my nose so it definitely doesn't need making thinner by any means but I feel like but it does also kind of complement the makeup look slightly now for my eyes again an eye you cannot see which is really really annoying I've decided to go for the Urban Decay Perversion Bigger Blacker Badder Mascara and I think this is just a sample size. I actually got this in the um, the Naked on the Run palette and I've only started using it recently and I absolutely love it. It actually does work in the sense of making my eyelashes a lot bigger. Although what I have forgotten to do before I've put that on is to curl my eyelashes slightly which is pretty annoying so what I'm going to do is I know, it's, I know I said I hate things near my eyes, but I have my eyes pretty much shut. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if I've even got my eyelashes in this when I'm putting it in. Like, I just kind of hope for the best because it terrifies me, but it does also make them look so much better. So with my very, very slight bit of mascara that I've put on my eyes, I am just going to go over them. I didn't really want to have to do that with mascara on there, but oh... But I'll just have to give them a good wipe now later on. I've got to put quite a lot on my on my real eyelashes because my eyelashes again are quite blonde. And now my lips are pretty smooth. That moisturising stick has kind of really gone into the skin. I'm going to move on to my lips. Now because I'm wearing false eyelashes and kind of a lot of makeup in general, I'm not going to go too all out I don't think when it comes to my lips. I've not fully decided on a final option yet. I want something I can reapply easily because obviously I'm going to be drinking throughout the day and as time goes on I'm not going to be able to do my lipstick probably quite as well as I could at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I want something that is kind of going to last. So I'm actually going to go for something quite easy. I would normally go for a lipstick. I might still change my mind on this. I have got a gorgeous, um, a couple that I always tend to go for. One of them being the YSL lipstick. This is really easy to put on. I can put this on most days of the week, no issue. But it's a little bit too pink and probably every day for what I kind of want for Slam Dunk. At the moment, I'm debating between maybe this kind of Kiko. Uh, it's more like a nudie brown shade. I might go for that on the day um, to start with and then I might actually switch it over. But for now I'm going to go for something a little bit easier to apply. Firstly I'm going to use the NYX lip liner in, I have no idea what this is in, um, in shade 14 nude suede shoes. And this is just this lovely, lovely nude shade. Now I've just put that um, obviously around my lips and then just a little bit on top of my lips as well just for a little bit of staying power. And Although this does match the Kiko one amazingly, just for kind of today and just kind of to see how long it lasts whilst I'm editing this video, I am going to go for... I have two NYX shades that I could realistically go for with this colour because I picked them based around the um, the pencil. And that's these two here. Now I think I'm probably going to go for Stockholm. <coughs> Stockholm is definitely my favourite of the pair and probably my most worn. These are just so easy to apply, it's unbelievable. Like, the thing is, you don't even have to be that precise. If you get, like, a really nice lip pencil with it, i say, like, I have literally just chucked that on and it looks absolutely fine. I find my lipstick does come off quite easily, so I always use the Rimmel Lip Lock. This is very much a, like, Marmite product. You either love it or you hate it. It does sting your lips. It tastes crap, but <coughs> it works and your lipstick will stay in place. And I will always, always recommend it. It tastes a little bit like aniseed. I mean, you don't taste it, but you can, well, you can A, smell it. And you can also kind of, it doesn't also take your lip colour off. A lot of you will say it does because you can kind of see, like, it's not as clear as it probably once was. It takes it off a little bit, but 
the whole idea of it is it holds it in place and I've loved it forever and it always always holds my lipstick on so if you can handle a bit of pain and I am the biggest wimp you've ever met and I can handle it handle it for like 30 seconds and it's absolutely fine now we're going in with the false eyelashes and it looks like I've hardly done anything at all to my skin and <laughs> which is really annoying but I like the look I've gone for it's it's not as OTT as I did last time actually which is weird so it'd be interesting to see what it looks like on the day. So for my eyelashes, I've gone for the Ardell Demi Wispies. Very, very popular um, eyelash brand. <coughs> I'm not a big user of false eyelashes just because I don't have many occasions where I do. And I've had a few times in the past where they start to come off and it's been a bit embarrassing. So I'm going to just give it a go. I'm going to see how they how they go on my uh, on my eyes. Now I have very very tiny eyes, so I've actually got another pack of these that I have already opened, so I'm just cheating a bit by showing you them. And I've tried the right eye on slightly earlier just to kind of measure it up to my eye, and I did actually have to cut a little bit off. <coughs> now this is the eyelash glue it comes with. And weirdly, it doesn't have like a stick or anything, which I'm kind of used to. So this is a little bit unnerving is that it's just a little tube because I've also used a lot of the Tanya Burr ones and it comes with like a little stick in the tube but these don't so I'm just gonna kind of hope to dear god that this is okay so I've put a thin layer on and then there is also quite a bit on the ends so they don't kind of pop up and I use these weird little eyelash applicators um, you can also use tweezers and everything and I've got a pair of tweezers just to kind of position them afterwards but I'm just gonna put it on my eye give me a minute we might be a little while so that is the finished look my eyelashes are on I actually stopped filming because it was taking quite a while to do I do take my time I'm not a big eyelash user so it, I've heard that literally practice does make perfect with eyelashes so you really really have to practice a few times um, I, they look absolutely fine. I finally managed to get them down. I'm going to keep these on for the rest of tonight just to see how they kind of, how they stay to my skin. Obviously, very, very different circumstances to how I'm going to be in Leeds. But I think if I take spare makeup with me, if they do come off and I need to rip them, I can kind of tidy things up and use, um, use mascara. Because you can use mascara to make your eyelashes look long. I just want to do a little something different. Um, so again, you can't really tell, but... I basically have just put on these Ardells, so they're just a little bit longer. Uh, I knew you wouldn't be able to really tell once they're on. I mean, you can in real life. My eyelashes do look a lot longer. Um, but yeah, this is a final look. So once I take that off, um, I'm also thinking about getting my hair cut kind of round to my face because I hate the way it's kind of shaping my face at the moment. I'm going to do something with my hair, but I'm not too sure what yet. And this is just the finished makeup look. Again can't really tell on camera I don't even know if this video will ever even go up but it looks very very different to uh, to how I look in the mirror right now put it that way so I might take a couple of pictures and insert them just so you can kind of see how it does look and um, but until next time I'll see you guys later